Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. To give more people a chance to listen to our podcast, we've launched our YouTube channel. From now on, your friends who don't have podcast apps will be able to listen to the Highlights from Ukraine on YouTube. Link to the channel will be in the description below. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 153 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. Ukrainian national oil and gas monopoly Naftogaz announced a default on its euro bonds due to the government's refusal to agree on payments on them, reports Interfax Ukraine. Earlier, the Cabinet of Ministers obliged Naftogaz to seek Cabinet's approval before executing any transactions related to the company's euro bonds. Naftogaz requested such permission, explaining the availability of the necessary funds to cover euro bond payments and possible negative consequences of a default. Cabinet, though, didn't provide such permission. Now Naftogaz won't be able to get access to international capital markets, and the cabinet is responsible for raising the funds necessary for the import of natural gas for the next heating season. Prime Minister of Ukraine Denis Shmigal announced that Kyiv offers creditors of the state road building company Ukravtodor and energy company Ukrenergo to defer the payments on their debts for at least two years, reports Radio Liberty. The proposal was sent to holders of Ukravtodor 700 million US dollars bonds and Ukrenergo 825 million dollars securities. The Prime Minister expressed hope that creditors would support Ukraine's appeal, noting that in the current unprecedented challenges this policy would apply to all of state's obligations. Ukraine asked the US government to provide gas land lease to ensure a stable heating season in the country, reports Ekonomichna Pravda. Prime Minister Denis Megal said that this request is part of the preparation for the most difficult winter in Ukraine's history. The UK added 42 individuals, including Russian Justice Minister Konstantin Chuchenko and a number of Russian governors to its sanctions list, reports European Pravda. Sanvar and Sanjar Ismailov were added to the list as well as they are nephews of Russian oligarch Alisher Usmanov. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky expressed gratitude to the UK for its unwavering firmness in sanctions matters and called on other countries to follow this example. The general staff of Ukraine informs that the enemy focuses its main efforts on preventing the advance of Ukrainian troops in the Kherson region, reports Ukrainska Pravda. In the Kramatorsk direction, Russian forces led an assault in the area of Verkhnyokamenske but were unsuccessful and pulled back. In the direction of Bakhmut, the enemy conducted a reconnaissance near Semahiria but suffered from heavy fire and withdrew. Currently, hostilities are ongoing in the Semihiria and Kodema areas. The Comeback Alive Foundation purchased the Bayraktar TB2 strike drone complex from Turkey, reports LBUA. The complex consists of three drones, air communication system, mobile ground control complex, ground data terminal, target recognition system, several dozen ammunition, other necessary ground equipment and spare parts. The total cost is over $16.5 million. Earlier, Ukrainian Pritula Foundation raised money for two such drones, but Turkey decided to give them away for free. Our Patreon supporters get access to a cool new series on wartime life in Ukraine. To join the club, Follow the link in the description below. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine. Thank you.